Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we start Unit 1, History and Evolution of European Integration. And we start topic, the treaties of Amsterdam and Nice. The Amsterdam Treaty was signed in October 1997. And after ratification, it came into force in May 1999. It amended the treaties of the EC and EU and renumbered them from letters to numerical forms. The aim of the Amsterdam Treaty was to create such political and institutional conditions so as to enable the EU to meet the future challenges of globalization of the economy and its impact on employment, internationalization of crimes such as terrorism, drug and human trafficking, proliferation of arms, environmental degradation and its impact on public health. The composition of the commission and the weightage of votes assigned to each member state in the council were other important concerns of the Amsterdam Treaty. The Treaty of Amsterdam proclaimed that the union was founded on the principles of liberty, democracy, respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms and the rule of law. At the same time, the new treaty acknowledged that the above principles could be infringed by a member state and laid down the procedure which the union should follow in dealing with such a member state. The Amsterdam Treaty guaranteed protection of fundamental rights such as equality between men and women, non-discrimination and data privacy. It also introduced changes in the freedom movement within the European Union and the included issues such as visas, asylum, immigration and other policies linked to the free movement of persons in the EC Treaty. The Amsterdam Treaty also dealt with police and judicial cooperation in criminal matters. The Treaty of Amsterdam underlined the European Charter on Fundamental Rights. It laid down the procedure by which an EU member can be suspended from its membership. If it violates the fundamental rights of the people guaranteed by the European Convention on Fundamental Rights, the Ambassadorum Treaty extended the provisions of non-discrimination to apply not only to nationality but also to gender, race, religion, culture, and sexual orientation. The Amsterdam Treaty also promoted transparency in the functioning of the EU by allowing the European citizens greater access to the official documents of the institution of the EU. The Treaty of Amsterdam devised to base and means to enable the EU to defend its interest more effectively in the international arena. It introduced certain changes in the Common Foreign and Security Policy, CFSP. It created a new post of high representative so as to give the CFSP greater prominence and coherence. The high representative will facilitate the creation of a common EU strategy in the field of foreign and security policy. 
the weightage of votes in the council the extension of qualified majority voting change in the structure and composition of the commission and strengthening the role of the president of the commission were the major institutional reforms envisaged by the treaty of amsterdam the treaty introduced changes in the citizenship provisions of the eu it clarified the link between the european and national citizenship it states unequivocally that the citizenship of the union shall complement and not replace national citizenship the two practical conclusion which could be gauged from it were firstly it is necessary to be a national of a member state in order to enjoy citizenship of the union secondly european citizenship will supplement and complement the rights conferred by the national citizenship moreover the amsterdam treaty established a new right for the european citizens every citizen of the union can now write to the european parliament the council the commission the court of justice the court of auditors the economic and social committee the committee of the regions or the ombudsman in any language of the eu and receive an answer in the same language the european union citizens rights were further confirmed by the treaty of nice in december 2000 when the charter of fundamental rights of the european union was formally declared this charter was framed in a european convention attended by the representatives of the european parliament national governments and the commission the charter was drawn up under six headings dignity freedom equality solidarity citizens right and justice the 54 articles of the charter spell out the fundamental values of the european union and the civil political economic and social rights of the european union citizens for instance the charter on dignity includes the right to life freedom of expression and conscience etc while the chapter on solidarity includes certain socio economic rights such as workers right to strike to be informed and consulted health care social security and social assistance throughout the european union the charter of nice promotes equality of men and women prescribed unique practices such as human cloning protects the rights of children women senior citizens and also insists on the right to a clean environment and to good governance the aim of treaty of nice was to prepare the european institutions for the forthcoming enlargement of the eu the treaty of nice was signed in february 2001 and after the required ratifications by the respective le- legislatures of the union members it came into force from february 2003 onward ireland was the only country which required a referendum for its rat- ratification in the first referendum it was rejected by the irish people but later it was approved by them 
This led to delay in the execution of the provision of Treaty of Nice. The Intergovernmental Conference IGC which resulted in the Treaty of Nice had the mandate for, of preparing the EU for enlargement by revisiting the treaties in four key areas. Size and composition of the commission, weightage of votes in the council, extension of qualified majority voting and enhanced cooperation. The institutional reforms achieved by the Treaty of Nice were technical and limited. The Treaty did not drastically change the institutional balance but rather made some adjustments in the functions and composition of the institutions and sought to enhance cooperation. There were two main reasons as to why the reform of the system was essential before the new member states joined. The first stemmed from the protocol on the institutions with regard to the enlargement of the EU. This protocol linked the question of the weight age of votes to the size of the commission. The member states which till then had two representatives in the commission wanted some compensation for the change in the composition resulting from enlargement. The second was related to the fact that after the accession of the new member states most of whom had a smaller population, the balance between the members for the purpose of decision making in the council could be affected if the old system of weightage votes was maintained. The IGC examined various solutions ranging from a weightage closely linked to the size of the population to a double simple majority system majority of the members of the state and majority of the population of the union. A compromise was finally found in a new system of weighting of votes that increased the number of votes for all member states while giving correspondingly more votes to those with the largest population. The new definition of qualified majority comprised another innovation. At the request of the member of the council, a check will be made when a decision is taken by a qualified majority to ensure that this majority represents at least 62% of the population of the union. If that is not the case, the act in question will not be adopted. This provision is in addition to the other conditions needed for the adoption of an act. It will guarantee that decision taken in the council will be representative of the majority of the union's population. At present, there are total 321 votes in the council allocated to different members of the EU on the basis of their population. In accordance with the provisions of the Treaty of Nice, out of this, 232 votes will constitute a qualified majority for adoption of any decision in the council. The structure and the provisions of the combined treaties are becoming increasingly complex with Nice being the seventh European treaty since the Paris Treaty of 1951. As each treaty becomes a law, it is unincorporated into the existing set of treaties which together form the consolidated treaty 
on European Union. The Treaty of Nice dealt mostly with the reforming the institutions so that the Union could function efficiently after its enlargement to 25 member states. The Treaty of Nice, the former Treaty of the EU and the Treaty of the EC have been merged into one consolidated version. The European Union is based on the concept of rule of law. This means that everything that it does is derived from treaties which are agreed on voluntarily and democratically by all member states. Previously signed treaties have been changed and updated to keep up with developments in society. The most recent one, the draft treaty for establishing a constitution for Europe aims to replace all existing treaties with a single text and is the result of the work done by the Convention on the Future of Europe and an Intergovernmental Conference, IGC. The Constitution was adopted by the heads of the states and government at the Brussels European Council in June 2004 and was signed in Rome in October 2004. It needs to be ratified by each member state in line with their constitutional arrangements, that is by parliamentary procedure and by referendum. The constitution will not take effect until it has been ratified by all the 25 member states. The European treaties such as Paris Treaty 1951 and the Rome Treaty 1957, the Merger Treaty 1967, the European Single Act 1986, the Maastricht Treaty 1992, the Ambassador Treaty 1997 and the Nice Treaty 2001 constitute the constitution of the European committee. These treaties impose obligations upon the national governments and confer rights to the citizens of Europe. These treaties are primarily legislation and provide legal basis to the secondary legislation in the form of rules, regulations, directives, decisions, etc. These treaties have now been clubbed together in one large treaty and after its ratification by all the members of the EU, it will be constitution of the EU. The ambitious EU constitution has suffered a setback after its rejection by some key members of the EU. However, it is a temporary set back and eventually the EU will overcome this ratification problem. The same thing happened with the Maastricht Treaty also, which was eventually adopted by all the members of the EU. Now at the end, let us sum up the unit. The journey which began in 1951 with the Paris Treaty to the European coal and steel community and then moved on to the strong 25 member European Union has been a long and a bumpy one. The present EU is the result of a first spanning over more than half a century. Buoyed by the success of the ECSC the European leaders were prompted to expand the economic cooperation to other fields. The result was the Treaty of Rome in 1957, which led to the creation of two 
European organizations, the EEC and EURATOM. These three European organizations, the ECSC, EEC, EURATOM, were merged into one European committee by the merger treaty in 1967. A single European Commission and Council were created for all the three organizations. These budgets were also merged into a single corpus. The EC ab abolished all the barriers of internal trade such as internal tariff, quotas, trust, and cartel. It also imposed a uniform tariff on the external trade and created a custom union and common market in Europe. After the merger treaty of 1967, the process of European integration slowed down a bit. However, it picked up again in 1980s with the preparation of a white paper under the presidentship of Jack Delors. It led to the signing of the Single European Act in 1986 which aimed at completing the formation of a single market by 1992. This paved the way for further integration, which resulted in the Maastricht Treaty in 1993, which is formally known as the Treaty of European Union. The Maastricht Treaty hindered the advent of political and social integration of Europe. It introduced the three pillar structures in the EU. The first pillar is the economic and social policy ESP and it will be achieved through the traditional EC, institutions of EC, SC, EEC and EURATOM. The second pillar is Common Foreign and Security Policy, CFSP. Its objective is to forge a common European foreign and security policy. The third pillar is the Justice and Home Affair, JHA, or Police and Judicial Cooperation in Criminal Matters to Check the Menace of Terrorism, Drug, and Human Trafficking and other criminal activities in Europe. The Amsterdam Treaty was signed in 1997 and its objective was to bring structural and functional changes in the institutions of the EU to meet the challenges of globalization and global terrorism. The Treaty of Nice was signed in 2001 and its objective was to bring changes in the institutions of EU to meet the challenges posed by the rapid expansion of the EU. The EU is the most successful regional organizations of the world. Other regions have been inspired to emulate the EU but no other regional organization has been able to match its achievements. It is a role model for other organizations. It will be no exaggeration to say that regionalism in international relations owes a lot to the European efforts at integration. It has also led to the end of the age-old rivalry among the European nations, particularly between France and Germany, the two main proponents of the European Union. Here we want to wind up today's lecture and we have come to the end of the unit. Thank you so much for your attention.